Uh, next, next up is um, monthly budget report. Deputy S Superintendent Scott Jones. We'll need those mics turned on again. Mine, I'm not lighting up. Okay, I'm, I'm good. Um, go ahead and, well, he'll see the green and then. Deputy Superintendent of Operations, Scott Jones, for the monthly budget report. Uh, before I get started, uh, Chair, I just want to um, call everyone's attention. If you're into board docs right now, we will be going through three items. Two are pretty consistent month to month. It's the report and the discretionary funds report. And then I do uh, respectfully request a board action that I'll get to here in just a second, or as part of 5.3. Um, so just to orient everyone to that particular item as well, as part of this overall item five monthly budget report. The Utah State Board of Education uh, remains financially sound to meet all of our all obligations. We are in the fourth quarter of, of state fiscal year 18, state fiscal year 18, so uh, closing procedures are underway. Uh, we look forward to this particular year end close as we do all others, especially since we are, or this is our first year in the finance system. Uh, great cooperation or cooperative effort with finance to get us into that for this year. So this will be our first full year operating in the uh, finance system uh, as, a, as a means of uh, ensuring uh, not only accuracy in the reports that we give to you, but transparency uh, across the entire state and to your constituents as well. Uh, for your review, uh, the monthly budget report is part of 5.1. Uh, again, we just take the process of uh, posting this uh, to allow you sufficient time prior to the board meeting to look at the overall summaries by section. Uh, we do uh, entertain section reviews as part of the finance committee uh, so that we can stay on top of uh, developments by section. Uh, but for purposes here, uh, as part of the monthly budget report, uh, for your review is all of the sections and, and their particular summaries. Uh, so then, uh, if, it, if it's all right with you, Chair, we'll just open it up to see if there's any particular questions by any board member on any of the uh, budget reports or status of the sections uh, to date. Okay, questions from board members regarding um, the monthly budget. Okay. Okay. Next, we'll go to the discretionary funds report. As part of this report uh, this month, there are, uh, well, let's, I'll, I'll wait till you pull it up. So draw your attention to the upper right-hand corner. Uh, there's still, how much of state funds is unencumbered? Uh, 275. So there's still 275,000 of state funds that is unencumbered. Uh, I was asked to promote some ideas. Based on the executive session this morning, uh, I have some um, uh, ideas that I'll present to finance committee tomorrow. Uh, if it pleases the board uh, for the use of that $275,000 uh, in light of or in support of what you were briefed on this morning uh, during the executive session. I won't get into too much detail, uh, but enough so that you know that we do have an action plan uh, to what you were briefed on this morning and that there's a, there's a good use of that $275,000 in, in mind. Not the entire amount. I still have some other ideas for you. Uh, by way of the finance committee tomorrow, um, so we'll we'll approach it on that. For your review, is the rest or the status of your discretionary funds? Uh, the report uh, we update monthly, uh, so I'll open it up uh, at your direction, Chair, for any questions or concerns regarding the discretionary funds report. Any questions from the board members? We'll look forward to a good discussion okay. tomorrow yes, in, in finance. Right. Um, so last month, as, as you know, it's a, it's a perpetual part of our process as each one of the committees uh, provide uh, 
briefings or back briefs to you on what was discussed. One important piece of, of the report last month that we didn't have uh, on the record is in the Finance Committee, uh, there was a motion in the Finance Committee for the board uh, to approve uh, the purchase of new tables for the boardroom uh, using, using the, this funding source. So um, we do need a motion uh, in order to use the funding to, uh, so you notice we did uh, follow the board's direction and, and purchase the um, systems that you're using now. And the purchase of the systems came much less than we had uh, set aside. So now we have room uh, within the discretionary funds to replace the tables and I highly recommend we do so. Uh, these tables have been in use for quite a long time. Uh, there's issues or situations with the uh, mounted uh, uh, plug-in or I can't remember what those are called, uh, power strips, the power strips uh, too. So we, we really do need to do that. It's a good use of, of taxpayer money to keep you up to date and current uh, with uh, enable to precisely and um, effectively run your meetings. Uh, so we would, or I do, respectfully request uh, that the board make a motion to approve the purchase of new tables for the boardroom as you did. Hey, turn your mic back on. I'm going to turn the other one off so I can bring others on if somebody wants to yes, make a motion. Yes, sir. Okay. Stokes. Uh, board Member Stokes. I move that we approve the purchase of the new tables for the boardroom. We have a second. Okay. Any comments? Is there a light? I, I have a question after. It's not to the motion. Oh, okay. Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Voting is unanimous. We, we do have a question um, from Board Member Belknap. Thank you, Chair. What are you going to do with these tables? And just a thought I have that when we have meetings downstairs in the basement, it's nice to have the, what's oh. it called? Skirt the skirt shield in the uh, front. Okay. And that might be a good place to have it because that's a big room to put. Anyway, just a thought. Yes. Okay. Um, we, so typically what we do is we surplus them so that they can be put to use by other agencies and or the public can do it by way of what we call the surplus process. Uh, I will get with Cami uh, and, and the superintendent and see if we could put these to good use downstairs. Yep. No, that's great. Yeah, I appreciate that. Right. I do think we have a plan, though, for, for tables down there, too, or for these tables. But I'll have to check with my boss, Cami Wilcox. So. I work, I work for Cammy, yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> see, I just want to see if people are paying attention, you know. Any, any further questions from board members? Sir, board? if I may, uh, re yes. related to the, oh, well, go ahead. If there's any other questions. Um, Regarding budget, this budget. Okay, so the budget, um, so as you all know, Major League Baseball season is underway, right? Yes, it is. And um, Major League Baseball pitchers, one of their ba greatest accomplishments is to pitch what's called a perfect game. You know, no runs, no hits, no walks, no errors. So Deborah Jacobson is our finance director, and she is a Major League Baseball pitcher. And she's about to pitch a perfect game, once again, for establishing the budgets that we, w w they'll be first reviewed by your finance committee members tomorrow. But we, they are posted, uh, the state fiscal year 19 budgets are posted for all of your review because what our intent is, is that uh, by way of discussion tomorrow and action by the finance committee, that they will make a favorable recommendation to approve the ba base budgets during the May meeting, which really further enhances our ability to continue our journey on the road to awesome, uh, you know, in the interest of our educators and our, our students for our teams here uh, as part of one team to support that. So. Um, we're way ahead of the curve, uh, so to speak, on that, and she's, she's done a lot of work uh, for this. We always try to not make eye contact with her, disrupt her game, because she's about to get into pitch a perfect game. So well, I'm, I'm kind of hoping too. you just didn't jinx her just now. I didn't. No, I didn't do it. I know, because, see, you understand you how it works, right? kind right? of socks on and everything Right, else so, that, so as the right. pitcher approaches the eighth or ninth inning, all the other team players move away from them on the bench. Yeah right just so they don't disrupt her so please no sudden movements or you know anything All like right. that and let's let her pitch the perfect game will be it, it's a process it's it's an ongoing process and we sincerely appreciate your support and is she doesn't do it by herself she has so you have such great staff and financial operations that because uh, in order to pitch a perfect game you have to have great defense too and so she's she's greatly supported by the 
all of the fi great financial analysts and all the positions in, in the section there. Um, I do want to say that Natalie couldn't be with us uh, today. Her, her father uh, had a liver transplant. It was very successful, so she's taking care of family business, and we support her in that aspect. So we wish her and her family the very best. And uh, believe me, she'll come back and give me a hard time here pretty soon. Okay. So looking have, forward to that. So. We have a, a question or comment from board member Lisa okay. Cummins. As long as we don't get in the hit in the face like no. that pitcher did. Yeah. No, no line drives. We'll, we'll, we're defense on that too. So okay. it's all good. Thank you, ma'am. Any, any further questions, comments? Well, we'll look forward to awesome tomorrow in finance. Yes, sir. Okay.